Hello again. Last time I had a bit of a disaster with breadboards. I finally got my register file working though. In the meanwhile I went on a business trip. I've been very busy with work and so have had very little time to play with electronics. So I'm very sorry that this video is pretty late. This time I want to show my program counter design and its implementation. Right, what is the program counter? Here is a picture of my current design for data flow within the CPU. I had initially imagined the program counter would be in the register file. Well, I changed my mind. The program counter, at a basic level, is a special register that determines the address of the next instruction opcode to fetch from memory. After each instruction, or byte thereof, it will increment by one. On branches, it will change to another value. In my design, it can output its value to the address bus. It needs access to the data bus for branching and PC relative addressing, and reads from the address bus in cases of absolute jumps. The main requirements that it has are that it must be able to maintain this register, be able to increment, be able to receive a new address, that is for absolute jumps, that it can add a signed 8-bit value for branches, and it must be able to add an 8-bit value for PC relative loads and stores. This leads to the following inputs and outputs a 16-bit address, an 8-bit data value, output enabled to send the program counter to the address bus, output enabled to send the sum of the program counter and a data value to the address bus, and a clock. The following three flags are triggered on the next rising clock hedge. Increment, write the value from address bus, and reset to zero. This is a block diagram of the elements. The core is a group of four 74163 synchronous counters. Each is only 4 bits, so I need 4 of them to make 16 bits. The counters themselves don't have controllable output enable, so there's a pair of 74541 drivers to enable or disable the output to the address bus. In other designs, the calculation of a PC relative address is done through the ALU. My colleague often tells me, a little copying is better than the wrong abstraction. In this regard, it's simpler, that is, less wiring, to include a separate adder here. It's an adder that sums a 16-bit and a signed 8-bit value. In reality, this is an 8-bit adder and an 8-bit incrementer decrementer. More on this in a moment. These are the connections that are active when reading and incrementing. The driver is active. The adder is still fed with the current PC value and whatever is on the address, but its output is ignored. Likewise, this is when writing a value. The only instruction in my instruction set architecture so far that can do this is a return from subroutine. The new value for the PC is taken from the address bus. When adding and reading, the adder's output is enabled. This is used when performing a PC relative load or store. We don't want to update the PC after this instruction. Where we do want to update the PC is when branching. The address bus is used as a convenient connection from the adder to the counter to write a new value. I've updated my schematics to include the program counter. Like with the register file, I've gone for a hierarchical sheet layout in KiCad. Here are the four counters and the two drivers. You can see here that the carry out is daisy chained from one to the other. What I had to watch out for is there are two inputs to control whether the value is incremented. There's ENP and ENT. ENT also controls whether the carryout is set and therefore must be connected to the previous chip's carryout. You can see here there's an internal bus that connects the counters to the drivers and the adders. Here are the two 4-bit adders and a gal to handle incrementing and decrementing. In my haste, I didn't order enough adders to achieve this without another gal. If I had used another two adders, one of their inputs would be bit 7 repeated. Just like the counters, these adders don't have output enable, so I had to introduce another driver. Finally, there are some pull up and pull down resistors. I pull the active low logic up so that the outputs are disabled as the board boots, and if I disconnect my Raspberry Pi Pico. So what about this programmable logic needed to do the increment and decrement? When bit 7 of the data is not set, the value is non-negative. 
the most significant byte needs to be incremented only if the carry is set from the least significant byte. When bit 7 is set, the value is negative. The most significant byte needs to be decremented only if the carry is not set. Remember again that this is 6502 style carry for subtraction. Now I've returned to the same problem I had with the register file. Fitting the logic for incrementing and decrementing in the same chip was an issue. This is the expression for the last bit of the output. With 18 terms, this is not going to fit. Then I remembered that I don't need registered outputs, and that I have two spare outputs for this chip. Quick side note, on the chips of the register file, I used the other two outputs for zero and carry flags. So I had a brainwave. Use a spare output as an intermediate value. So I thought I could build this as two 4-bit incrementers. The only connection between them is the carry from the lower 4 bits to the upper 4 bits. This works like a charm. Time for a practical demonstration. It'll be a miracle if you can see anything under all those debug wires. What's better than a Raspberry Pico for testing? Two, that's what. I need 16 bits for the address, 6 flags and 8 bits for the data. That's 30 GPIOs, and the Pico only exposes 29. As before, I've got some MicroPython scripts. Now, I must be a lead hacker because I have two terminal windows open at once. On the left, I can control the address bus and the flags, and on the right, the data bus. Also a bit different this time is that the address bus is tri-state. This means that my script has to only switch to output mode when required, and after that, switch back to input mode. I have the address displayed on the top of my hex debug board on the data bus below. I've also got the flags wired up. To start off, let's set the PC to a value of hex 1234. The Pico will output an address, set the load active, and perform a clock cycle. Now let's read it. Good, it's still 1234. Now I'll increment it once. The Pico will set the ink flag active and perform a clock cycle. Since the output enable was not set, the value didn't appear on the address bus, so I'll read it. Good, it's hex 1235. Let's test the ripple carry between nibbles. I'll set the address to be hex 123f, increment it, and then read the value. Good, it's 1240. I'll repeat the process, but this time with 12FF. Good, the value is 1300. And finally, with 1FFF. Great, the value is 2000. Now I'm going to test the adder. There are a lot of combinations, and I've tested all of them off camera. So, as an example, I'll set an address of hex 6789 and I'll set the data input to hex 7e. The result should be 6807. In the first mode I'll just add and read the value. Great, that's the right answer. This should have left the PC unaltered. Great, it's unaltered. In the second mode, I'll add and write the value back. After it's done that, reading shows 6807. Great. Let's try subtracting. I'll set the data to be F0. That will subtract 16 from the address. Let's perform the operation. Great, it's 67F7. Finally, I'll reset to zero, which is how the CPU should start up when booting. Reading the value gives zero. That's great. Okay, that just about does it for this one. Despite having had very little time, I've got this board working. Whilst designing it, I realized that there's another missing feature in the register file, but I'll deal with that later. Next time, I'll have to work on the decoder. I might start with a quick introduction of my instruction set 
and an overview of the overall connections between modules and the CPU. I've already started on that, and as a result, my brain has melted. As always, thank you for watching. I am pleased that at least some people find it entertaining enough. Bye for now.